This is a game between Ernst Jacobson with the white pieces and Aaron Nimzovich with black. So in this position, black's advantage lies on the fact that he has a bishop over a knight and that white's pawns on the C and D files would eventually become weaknesses sometime during the game. So in the game, Nimzovich played bishop to f5, rook to c1, h5 securing the home for the bishop on f5, rook c3, and now a very nice move, a4. What is black's plan? Black is going to get a superiority on one wing and then create a, a second weakness on another wing or somewhere else in the position and attack that second weakness and eventually win uh, one of the two weaknesses and win the game. So here, black, white replies with knight to d1. Notice that if knight takes pawn, then we play rook to a8, knight b2, and rook takes a2, and uh, black is winning. And if rook to a3, then simply rook to b8, and after knight takes pawn, rook a8, uh, we're going to attack the pin piece with bishop to d7, and that's going to be lights out. So after knight to d1, black plays g5. This is the other phase of the plan. Now that we have a superiority on the queen side, now we're playing on the king side. Knight to e3, bishop d7, king e2, f5. We're going to create that second weakness. King d2, f4, and we've created it. Now the g-pawn is a weakness. King f7, we're going to target it by playing rook to g8. Knight f2, rook g8, king e2, rook g2. We're up a pawn, and now the game is simply uh, a matter of, of just pushing a pawn, basically, pushing the h-pawn. Rook c1, bishop f5, a3, h, 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 bishop d3, check. And the game very soon ended after rook 3 3 check and 